Hey guys, it's your girl Macy Lynn. Always a hundred, kicking it to a thousand. Yes, I'm in the bathroom. Stop being nosy. Um, I had gotten some questions. I had gotten some questions from some of my viewers talking about my hair, wanting to know uh, what's up with them. So let them. Um, the first question, and if I haven't got to your question, um, please write to me. I'm sorry for now. Please write to me. I'll get to them the next set of questions I may do later on um, in the weeks and whatnot. But the first set of questions um, from one of my viewers, they say, uh, what is your natural hair color? And if you dye your hair, um, why don't you dye your new, new girl? And my natural hair color is dark brown. And the reason that um, I dye my hair is because I like a lighter brown. It makes my face pop out more. I just think it's more cuter. And it defines my curls really nicely. Unlike dark, my dark brown hair, which makes it look really pan. It just looks really bleh. It doesn't give it enough definition. And um, it just don't show it, you know, my curls as much as it should. And with light brown hair, it actually gives it a nice tint. It looks really pretty. And people can see from it. And if you can see right here, that's my brown hair, or my dark brown hair. It's more of a blackish color. And the reason why I don't dye my um, new growth as much, because I dye my hair uh, maybe twice a year one in the summer and one in the fall, you know just because I don't like putting too much chemicals and sometimes certain dyes do affect your curls and it does dry out your curls a funny way. Like I said, sometimes um, what will happen with one hair might not happen to another or your hair is much different than the other type it's working with. So you gotta understand when it comes to my curls, it does dry them out a little bit and um, it makes my hair feel funny. Like the first couple of weeks, my hair will curl a little funny and then it'll go back to what it was supposed to be. Um, the reason why I don't dye it, my roots as much like dyeing it to a uh, time of the year, I also use it as an indicator to like see how long my hair has grown. And it lets me know, you know, judging by what you have now seen, I had dyed my hair December. Uh, yes, December. And um, this is how much new growth has came in, and I'm so proud of it because this is a lot of new growth that I'm seeing just from now to March, you know. So, um, it's a lot of new growth. So, here's your length what is the length of your hair? Um, from the last time I checked it, because when I came home this week from college, I had the because my mom had to really just turn my head all around and pull and everything but um pulling from my hair and everything and from the back of it and i'm really proud of how long it has gotten we measured out 8.5 um some parts of my hair have been like half probably 4.5 just because um when i first got it um when i first went for the big uh chop i had it cut in layers so there's like a few parts in the back that um are like a little short like on the top part it's a little shorter than it should be but overall like around here and certain places around here is much longer than the back part i wish the back would grow a little longer but you know it's with natural hair it's all about patience how often do you trim your hair well um i don't trim it as much as i should but i do a do a i do do a dusting i know that sounds weird <laughs> Mm. but um i do do a dusting and um i'm hoping i'm saying this right and if i'm using the term wrong please quote me on it i always want to be 100 about my facts um i do a I do do a dusting, which means I will sit after I detangle my hair and everything and I'm watching maybe Judge Judy or one of my shows or maybe a Netflix movie. I, When I'm tilted up and I can see the TV and I'm like looking in the light because I use the light of the TV and look into the light and I will look and I will check each strand after I do my twisting, I'll do a two strand twist and throw in sections, I will pull a bit of my hair and put it up like this 
and as I'm watching the show, I'm actually looking at the ends of my hair, and one I will spot out a strand. If one strand has either a knot or a split end, I will take that strand and I will cut up to the knot or to the uh, split end, and then just let it go. I don't go and just you know pull this and just chop it off. No, I just chop off the um the knots or the split ends that I do not want anymore because when you have a knot in your hair you might as well get rid of it. It's just gonna make your hair um less healthy and everything. And I'd rather get rid of the knots. Like if it's just like a one strand of my hair, if I can check out my hair and there's just like about 50 of those strands that have knots in it, I'd rather cut them little knots off than just go home and get my whole head chopped off when I'm just really cutting off 50 strands. What do I use for um, to detangle my hair? Well, usually I use a dead man brush or um, the generic kind. If you go to the um, the hair supply store, is a Diane brush, and I use a dead man brush, which is um, a black and red brush. You can take out the bristles really easily, and you can. Um, fit it for your hair type depending on yours. I use all the brushes because my hair is fine and my friend she has more of a fro furry curl so she uses only three bristle rolls so it depends on your hair and how sensitive your scalp is and how sensitive you are or maybe you want you know if you want less you can take out um less if you want more you know what i'm saying you keep it all in there i keep all my brushes in because one if i lose one or one breaks off i'll at least you know what i'm saying i get really angry about it <laughs> so i use a dim man brush um also i use a wide tooth comb just in case if I don't have my dimming brush I might as well use a wide tooth comb. I use more of my wide tooth comb in the shower when I shower so I just go easily and pick through. I also use my um, wide tooth comb to pull up my hair and make it more more volume to it, give more um, uh, body to it. I also use my fingers because the best thing to know about your hair is your fingers. You feel all throughout your knots and everything. See what's going on with your hair. I always use my fingers first. I use my fingers and then afterwards that's it. I basically use a white tooth brush, a brush, a no, but I use a white tooth comb. I use a dead man brush and I also use my fingers. Those are the natural things that I use to pick out my hair. Um, but if anybody have any suggestions that they use to uh, detangle their hair, please give it to me because I would love to learn more um, easy ways. But like I said, I always start from my ends and work my way up because it's more easy and you're pushing down your knots out of your hair that way. Um, what is your hair type? My hair type is like um, a kinky curly. I'm, I'm believing that I'm like a... Uh, 3C yeah a 3C a 2C something I'm a 3C I am thinking I believe I'm a 3C um hopefully I'm saying this right because the last time I checked yeah I'm a 3C but I'm, I'm gonna say 3C if anybody finds something else for me tell me but um I'm a 3C um I'm more curly than kinky but some of my hair pattern is uh so my hair pattern is the same, like my hair pattern in the back may be more kinkier, but in the front and all the areas as you see, I had, um, today I had braided, uh, did a braid out on my hair, but most of my hair, whether I curl, um, braided or two strand twisted, it, it always goes to the curly form, I always, um, goes to that form for some reason, it just loves the form and, um, my mom always say, train your hair, if you train your hair, it will follow the ways that it's supposed to if you train it right, and I, I'll be like, but um yeah basically that's what I, um, my hair type is the 3c i'm more of a curly than kinky but there's some parts of my hair that is more kinky uh where it's a little kinky and it got that s pattern to it um let me see what is your best opinions about transitioning with um transitioning to natural and perm i'm transitioning um this viewer asks about um, what should she do with her transitioning hair she's um she been asking me and i um i'm glad that she asked me about this because my friend is also going through the same thing and basically when you're transitioning hair the first fear of transitioning through hair is losing the length that you have you maybe have the length like 
when you permed your hair, it's probably right here or maybe lower or maybe it's at the length that you want it and you now want to go to um, natural hair and you don't want to do it because you're going to lose such mu um, so much of your length that you have um, grown for so long and uh, you're just scared to just go through and get that big chop. Um, if I was to, for this advice, I would say um, if you don't want to give up that length and you don't want to lose, you know, all your hair and you want to learn how to get back to natural and do everything, if your hair is um, with two different types of hair, you got to understand one hair needs something and the other one needs another thing. You have to treat them, if you know how to treat both of them and, um, and treat them so you can use them in their both different ways, then okay, that's fine with me. If you know how to deal with the perm part and then you know how to use the natural part and uh, keep everything, you know, at harmony, then fine. But if you don't know how to do it, then my best bet is to use protection styles that we use all the time. Braids, um, two-strand twists, flat twists, um, pin-up, even put it in a bun, a nice little bun and whatnot. Um, big chunky braids i um i love using chunky braids i don't get micros because they put too much tension on my scalp and my edges but I use chunky braids chunky braids are very beautiful and um they're very you know protective and they don't pull as much and my best bet if you want both your worlds to be okay there's some world that you have to get rid of and by that i mean cut a little bit like maybe half the length off your perm hair because you gotta understand your perm hair is very fragile now because you're you know now you know that natural girls also use water a lot water is like gold liquid to us we have to use it so if I can give my best advice on it I would cut half the perm off my hair and then grow enough to a length that I'm okay with where I can fully say hey cut this perm out my hair so I can let my um so I can finally say set my free hair free shoot just let my natural hair go but um that's why i say as the advice um like i say use protection hairstyles when you get ready for the big chop i'm actually helping my friend understand you know she has to get rid of um some of her perm hair to make sure both her worlds are safe i know she wants to keep the um same length but sometimes you gotta cut a little bit to be a little happy and a little graceful believe me um so tay if you're watching this girl i love you babe but i'm gonna help you out the same way we going hey um what oils do i use i mostly use um hopobo oil um hopobo oil is the closest oil to recreate your natural hair oil which is sebum yeah that sounds really weird but um sebum is basically your natural human oils and we don't have as much as we do during the day man mine my scalp gets really dry sometimes when i'm doing my hair or maybe um depending on the weather because my scalp really does get dry so i use hopobo oil to recreate my sebum or you know just it's really great it's great for the skin removing makeup for your lips it's uh it has multiple uses it's good for skin um like i say i sometimes put on my ashy elbows because sometimes mama needs some uh some grease on my elbows okay um but hopobo oil is my number one on the charts i use um coconut oil puts back moisture also gives a beautiful shine i love the shine to it it doesn't let my hair get um it doesn't let my hair look dull it actually makes it really pretty it makes my hair defined and people see it and they're like wow so i use coconut oil i also use olive oil it's been used long time ago by the greeks they called the gold liquid you know what i'm saying they use it for medicine they use it for skin and they use it for hair it made your hair look great moisturized and everything believe me if this oil wasn't that great they wouldn't be using it and it doesn't block your pores too so it's a really great oil you guys um i use cooking i i go and go to the grocery store and i'll just pick about pick up a bottle and take it and use on my hair heck i cook me something on it too while i'm doing um i also use tea tree oil it is a anti-fungal anti-itch anti-everything if you're really doing well um 
but yeah I use it for my skin I use it for my hair like I said it's great for the scalp I always put it on my scalp um, because sometimes I do braids when I braid my hair or when somebody braids my hair it gets a little itchy so I just put a little tea tree oil just to keep the itch away um, what else do I use um I have not used a carrot oil but I'm gonna give it a try see how well it works for my hair but these are all the oils I have um, listed to you guys so really I really recommend um hapobo oil hapobo oil yeah I'm saying right and coconut oil and olive oil those are my best three oils that I ever use in my lifetime and I hope you guys send me some more questions I love answering these questions I love connecting with people and I love um getting videos from other people tell me what do they do with their hair i love it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel comment on my channel i love talking to you guys and i love expressing how much i love my hair also i want to give a big shout out to miss b i love your um i love your channel i love how you're down to earth and thank you for the advices whenever i have it um question or i feel like something is in my heart that i have to say thank you